Okay, we're back again. So our next step is to determine a difficulty index for the multiple choice items on the test. The last thing we did in the previous video was get a sum or determine the number of successful students for all the multiple choice questions and get a sum of all the credits for any partial credit item. So here's what we'll do for the multiple choice difficulty index. And it's really pretty simple. All it is is simply just taking the number of students who got it right divided by the total number of students that took the test. And we'll multiply it by 100 to make a percent. So we're going to put that formula right here. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on that particular cell. I'll type in the equals. And as soon as you put an equals in there, it's immediately looking for some kind of a formula. So I want the number of successful students. In this case, there's four of them got it right. Divide it by the total number of students. And I made that a separate little cell by itself that I would change any time I use this Excel as a template for other classes. I'll click on that cell. And then I'm going to multiply it by 100. So I'm going to shift 8 times 100 and hit enter. So now there's the formula. And I'll go back and just take a look at it. There's the formula. It's M6, which is this particular cell, divided by E3, which is this cell right here, times 100. Total number of successful students divided by the total number of students taking the test times 100. And it gives me a percentage. Now I want you to show you what happened if I just go ahead and take this formula and just fill it down to the next um, cell beneath that. So if I do a fill down, you'll see I'm going to get an improper um, equation. And I'll tell you the reason why. So let me click on that cell for a second. If I click on that cell, you'll see it didn't choose the E3, which is the number of students in the class. And the reason why it did that is because it's determining what to do in that particular cell for a formula based upon the placement of this particular cell from that one. So in other words, it says, I'm going to put in this location right here, a cell that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 columns over to the left, and 1, 2, 3 columns up. Because that's what you used in terms of the placement for that one. It went over 9, up 3 to say, ah, there's the cell I'm going to be using for that number of students. So here's how you're going to get around that. Um, I'm going to set it so that it always chooses that particular three, E3. And here's how you do it. I'm going to go into the formula bar. I'm going to place my cursor in front of the E. And I'm going to type in a dollar sign. And I'm going to now place my cursor, oops, place my cursor um, in between the E and the 3. And also put another dollar sign there. Now that makes that E3 being the cell that's always used in any of these formulas. So now I hit the return. And you see it didn't change my equation. But now if I drag down and fill this equation into that next cell beneath it, I'll do a fill down. You'll see I get the property of the formula. Because in other words, I had 10 students get it right. Out of 10 students, should be 100%. Now if I click on that cell and look at the formula, you can see, yes, it's M7, which is the number of successful students, divided by E3, which is always going to say it's always going to use that particular cell in the formula. Multiply it by 100, of course, to make it a percent. So that's that formula. It's all set to go. I can go ahead and just click and drag down to all my multiple choice items and do a fill down. And we're good to go. So there's the test item analysis um, difficulty index determined for all the multiple choice uh, test items. The next one is to do the partial credits.